Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. We are here. Hello, Miss Dolores, Lisa, Niqua. Hello there, Merlene. Hello, 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 hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? So listen, y'all. We um honestly and truly, we um we 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 well, what we already been thinking is here. Who remembers when we did part one? Who remembers? I want to know who's been here long enough that when we did part one, we're not surprised. Let's just put that out there, okay? Um, with this whole new Disney, uh, this whole new Nickelodeon documentary, we've said this before, okay? Uh, we're just wait. We're glad that you guys decided to tell us what's really been going on. Hey, Mister and Mrs. Vacation, how are you, love? We're 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 happy that you guys are finally ready to face the music, um, and really let us know what we already have discussed we've already have covered we already have put out there we already have questioned we have said this now i'm gonna tell you my reason my, my thoughts on why i think this is coming out now the first thing is i think that this is coming out because i know miss deborah i know i know i know i think this is coming out because drake bell okay so as you guys know drake bell was accused of some things as well and privy to this documentary he began to speak about how he has been impacted by um nickelodeon but he also i feel like began to speak out more because he has been accused of some things too and i think that this is his way to say listen I got caught with something, yes, but at the end of the day, this is coming from something that is deeper than just Drake Bell. Okay? This is deeper. This is this is something that has been going on for a very long time. Okay? So today we're going to get into a documentary that is out right now about um Nickelodeon and many child stars, including the innuendos of videos in which we ha uh oh what happened did i do oh there, there we go sorry guys one second i didn't click the button over here to where it messed me up a bit kind of zoomed in Alrighty, so um we're going to talk about you know how nickelodeon has affected many of these kids and some of aaron uh uh, uh hey aaron so a lot of these videos and that is coming out right now we have seen before okay if you remember I've showed these videos before, guys. I've put these videos out there to say, do you see what is going on over there at Nickelodeon? Do you see how they are uh, sexualizing children with objects and bananas and water bottles and all these different things? Are you guys noticing this? So now the videos in which we have already seen, they're now coming to light. And many of the people that are part of these uh, these videos are speaking out and saying, yeah, this is what happens. And now we also get a full understanding of why many of them have went through the things in which they have went through, why their lives are in the direction that they're going when it comes to these child stars. Now we know why. OK, now we get it. So the dis disgraced TV producer, Dan Snyder. Um, his empire has delivered so much iconic television for children for decades. However, in a new documentary series called Quiet on the Set has exposed the toxic culture that thrived behind the scenes. So the series pulls back the curtains on the show like Amanda show, iCarly, Victorious and many, many more revealing the troubling the troubling realities that was faced by young actors under Snyder's director direction. So it is also a stark contrast to the fond memories that viewers, viewers once enjoyed. Dan Snyder is so evil. And the fact that this man boldly continues to deny after so many children have been impacted by his actions, how he continues to prowl through the media as if, as if, as if all of this is just all made up stories and none of this is real is, is, is shocking to me. He boldly continues to act like this is just all a figment of these children's imaginations. It's, it's, it's like he thinks that he's still on the set and he's trying to keep it quiet. It's as if this doesn't exist. That's what this is reminding me of. So in March of 2018, 
Nickelodeon and Snyder issued a joint statement announcing the end of their partnership, citing a mutual de decision not to extend their current deal. However, the circumstances surrounding Snyder's departure was clouded by allegations of abusive behavior and questionable con to conduct that was happening on set. Reports also emerged detailing complaints from staff members regarding Snyder's treatment of young stars and his behaviors behind the scene. And I'm going to say something. What is more, more disgusting to me is why are you guys just now deciding to say that you want to speak out? These children, many of these children are in their 30s now, pushing 40 now. And all of a sudden now, you people are deciding and you, you grown adults that was there on the scene said nothing. And now that it's taking for a, 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 a documentary to come out to the people after you gave us article upon article, story after story, snippet after snippet. And now you guys want to face the music with interviews and things like that. When you guys could have did this years ago, as children continue possibly even still in 2024, because let's not forget, I always tell you guys about the culture. The cult chur, the cult in the scripture, the scripture of Nickelodeon and many other uh, different organizations and entertainment. You will never be able to convince me that just because Dan Snyder is gone, that the book, that the book had stopped there. And something tells me that when we get to 2040 and 50, the child stars that you see today will be the child stars that that the child stars that you see on Nickelodeon today will be the same that will have the same stories that we've seen from child stars that we watched as kids. And they're going to have the same exact story because you will never be able to hey Mike, you will never be able to convince me that the buck stopped right there. I think it continued. Okay? So throughout the years, allegations against Snyder had continued and surfaced with, with claims of sexualization of young actors. On the show, such as Victorious in 2022, there was an investigation by Insider where former collaborators of Snyder had came forward with accounts of inappropriate behavior, including instances where he reportedly had pushed for more revealing out outfits for some of the young stars and his behavior behind the scenes. Throughout the years, the allegations continued. So the, con the controversy surrounding Snyder also in his conduct has caused a shadow to come into his legacy of Nickelodeon, raising important questions about the treatment of some of the young actors in entertainment in the in entertainment in industry and the responsibility in those position of power. So the, the story of Dan, Sn Dan Snyder's dis uh, departure, I'm sorry, serves as a cautionary tale about the complexities and the challenges of navigating the world of children in television programming. Okay? I looked him up. One of those fat low lives. No, he, and you know what, Mr. Soso? It's sad that when you look him up, this is all you see. So that lets you know that how deep this goes. This, this goes deeper than what many of us can ever imagine. And we only have a handful that is bold enough to say, me too. While you have some that is still sitting in silence and saying nothing, and you have some that have lost their, their lives fighting the demons that was left behind by Nickelodeon, and we can name those names because we can name a few that has been affected by the impact of Nickelodeon and Dan Snyder's actions. So first of all, we have Drake Bell's traumatic experience. So one of the most, one of the most impactful moments in the series about Nickelodeon, Drake Bell, known for his role in, Dr in, Dr in Drake and Josh. So Bell bravely has shared his harrowing experience of being repeatedly assaulted by the dialogue coach, Brian Peck. So, Remember how I said, the buck don't stop here. If there's one, there's two. So not just Dan Snyder, okay? You also have other people 
that is associated with Nickelodeon that is also a part of this. Okay? Brian Peck being one, and we're going to do an independent show on him alone because many of you may, may not know, this is not his only allegation. Okay? This is not Brian Peck's first and only allegation from Drake, from, uh, from Drake Bell is not his only a victim. Okay? So his show, just like how we did one, on just Dan Snyder, we're going to do one on him as well. Because I feel like that as the time go on, we're going to have more victims that's going to say his name. And you guys already know where it com was com where it's coming from. So um, he says, so he says that Drake Bell says that this happened as young as 15 years old. Peck's despicable actions had extended upon Bell as he was in a, in a disturbing connection to an infamous killer, John Wayne Gacy, Bell's story sheds light on the dark underbelly of the entertainment industry and the lasting impact of exploiting vulnerable young talents. So, you also have actor, former actor of all that, okay, who name is Brian Hearn. He also reflects on the troubling past uh, with racially being stereotyped with roles in Nickelodeon. Hearn also recalls being subjected to degrading scenarios, including being labeled as a piece of charcoal and engaging in demeaning acts on air. His accounts underscores the damages and effects that was perpetrating in stereotypes and the need for proper protection of child actors in the industry. Then we have Ariana Grande, okay? So amidst the allegations, of many things being sexualized on Nickelodeon, there was select, select scenes that showed disturbing clips and they have res resurfaced as of recently, which I'm not going to show. We have watched them before, okay? And they have res resurfaced on social media, sparking controversy among fans. In the new docuseries, Quiet on Set, the dark side of the kids' TV shed light on the particular scenes that involved Actress are Ariana Grande that have raised concerns about the inappropriate nature of the content. On the noteworthy, noteworthy scene that was discussed, discussed in this documentary, it was featured with Ariana, Ariana Grande in a bathroom, in a bathroom attempting to extract juice from a potato. Who remembers that video? Press one if you remember when we watched that to, to make that uh, potato. When she was taking the potato and she was making these noises and she was screaming at the same time and the gestures and the innuendos that was happening during that moment. Okay. That's the same video that we watched yeah, last year that is now resurfacing again of her, of her squeezing that and making. So for those of you guys that haven't seen the video, it's basically an innuendo of a performance adult-like performance, but done with a potato in her hand. You remember, I, you remember I was driving. Yes. So that video was popping back up again. Okay. So, um, so while another scene also de depicted her lying in a bathtub along I call e casters, Jeanette McCurdy and Nathan Kress, allegations from Nickelodeon cast and crew have suggested that Dan Snyder, the creator, wrote dirty jokes into scripts and also used them to sexualize scenes with teenage actresses, leading to discomfort among those, in, those that are involved. In one scene, Snyder can be heard instructing Jeanette and Nathan to pull water and soap on Ariana's head while she was fully clothed in a bathtub. So the clip has been reshared on multiple social media platforms and has garnered a significant attention and criticism for its views noted the, uh, how uncomf uncomfortable the atmosphere was during this shooting of these episodes. Okay, so fans have also expressed their concerns about the perceived sexualization of young actresses with comments highlighting the discomfort that was felt by the cast members. So, so Snyder has since acknowledged the need to remove any offensive content 
from the controversy, I mean, from social media and the shows, he does not want them to be going across social media. Here's how you know he's guilty. Sir, why do you want them re review na uh, removed now? Why you don't want them floating around now, but you were okay with them floating around on, on, on networks for children to watch them on their televisions? So this is a sign of guilt. This is a sign of guilt that you are ashamed of the actions in which you have done. Because if you wasn't ashamed of your actions, you would have no problem with those vid videos being up. You did not have a problem with those with those videos being up during the time. So don't be ashamed of them now. Face the music. Face the music. Even though you continuously say that all these allegations are false. Okay? He's guilty. You're guilty. And now that everybody is, is pointing out the in your, in your windows, and now everybody can clearly see what you were doing with young children and teenagers. Now they can see the gestures that you were making with different objects. Now that they can clearly see it, you don't want nobody talking about it because you're guilty of it. Because if it was no problem, they would still be there. And you wouldn't be saying you don't want it there and people looking at it inappropriately. When you made them, you knew that people were going to be making, they're going to look at it inappropriately. It's just that back in the day, our eyes wasn't so wide open as they are now. And many Americans' eyes are wide open and we can clearly see what's happening around us now. So it's a little bit harder for it to be hidden from us when we see what you're doing on national television. Of course he's guilty, Evangelist. Okay? So then you have Amanda Bynes. And I must tell you guys, have you guys seen Amanda Bynes as of lately? I've covered many child stars. And I must tell y'all that Amanda Bynes in her current state. You know how that, that song is written all over your face? That's what her face is. Her face. Yes, she's going to school to become a nail tech now. Her face says so much even in her distance away from the industry and trying to rebuild herself as a, a woman that is an everyday girl no longer a part of the dark side you can vividly see that amanda binds it's not okay and you can vividly see that she's trying to rebuild the woman in her because the little girl in her is possibly deceased because so much trauma has come from her being a child and you can literally see it out of all the child stars that I've covered and all the child stars that I've seen hers is kind of the most saddest one y'all and I'm not going to say that hers is more bigger than anybody else's, but because all of them are sad, but to see it, visually witness it is sad. That little girl died a long time ago, a long time ago. And she looks so, it's like she's numb where you can possibly, if something was to happen, she probably wouldn't even flinch to it because she's been hurt so many times to where she's used to it at this point. That if a person does something wrong to her, she just pick up and keep moving as if it never happened. That's what she looks like. She looks numb. If you want me to be honest, she does. And it's sad. So in the case of Amanda Bynes, the conduct of the former Nickelodeon executive Dan Snyder has once again gone under, under scrutiny. So there was a resurfacing video on social media and the video had featured Dan Snyder in a hot tub reportedly with underage Nickelodeon star Amanda Bynes in the segment, which is said to have aired in 2002. In this episode, Amanda's, j j Amanda's jacuzzi is what it was called, Sn Snyder and Bynes 
had exchanged comments raising questions about the nature and the extent of their relationship, especially as Bynes was being below the age of consent at the time. So the emergence of the video has re reignited the interest of Snyder's behavior, especially in the light of these recent allegations of misconduct and the toxic work environment of Nickelodeon and the production company. The video clip is part of a larger conversation that has happened because of this documentary. In the viral snippet, Bynes invites Snyder to join her as a guest in creating an uncomfortable a dynamic given Snyder's dual role as the executive producer, uh, uh, executive producer and head writer of The Amanda Show. They exchange quips and also shared a meal of spaghetti with given the significant age gap between Snyder and Bynes. So in an interview, this is what this is what he boldly says. This is a you know how a man is so 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 uh, bold in his evil. He doesn't even know what he says sometimes. Was repeatedly abused from a young age until she co she couldn't deal with it anymore at 43. My con my condolences to that and I'm definitely keeping you guys in my prayers. Um so in, a, in an interview, this is what Snyder said. He defended his actions with Amanda Bynes, stating that he fully supported her decisions to pursue an emancipation from her parents. And he had also assisted her in attempting to run away from home. The interview with Snyder comes in the wake of the release of the Discovery documentary, Quiet on the Set. So you were a part of, it was your coercion. It was your control that you took it upon yourself to convince this young girl to get emancipated from her parents, but yet be abused by you. which has left her with a destroyed life. And something tells me by your response alone that you guys' relationship, and I don't know why I feel that way, and you guys, let me know in the comments if you would agree. Let me know if you agree to this. For some reason, that statement makes me feel like that their, their relationship was deeper than just producer and actor. Something tells me that you had this girl in a situation that allowed you to gain control over her every move and every step of her life. Because out of all of this, you can boldly get on an interview and say that you support Amanda Bynes and everything that she does. And you also was a part of her being able to pursue her emancipation from her parents. And you also attempted to help her run away from home. Run away to you? Was it to run away with you? I would love to know that part. I would love to know, was this runaway? Was an effort to run away from you? mean to you so that you can continue on and, and and this abuse off the set because it was so quiet on it. And I believe possibly that would explain control and destruction of the inner soul is the goal. And that would possibly explain while out of all of the kids that we see as child stars, she looks and it's written all over her face. It's because she's possibly went through some of the worst because hers could have possibly been off of the set because I would love to know where did she run away to and why would you feel the need to get her emancipated? 
The only way that I would see that you have the need to get her emancipated is that she can be under your full control and your full, your full manipulation. And you can continue to do what you want to do with Amanda Bynes without the stop and block of her family. And I would love to see, I, I wish, I hope that one day Amanda Bynes speaks. Because as of recently, he has made a statement to say that all of this is a lie. None of this is real. But I think what's more is that, did you guys know that some of the parents of some of these child stars, even after these allegations have come to the forefront, did you guys know that some of the parents have boldly spoken out to say that they still support him? Went to social media to say that they boldly support him and they do not believe these allegations. Parents of these kids, they are not lying. They are telling the truth exactly. I always say this and I'll say it again. If there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there is no lies. Okay, we have had child after child after child that has been impacted by Nickelodeon. At what point are these parents waiting for, for them to realize that this is real? And the fact that even after all of this is coming out, a parent can come and stand on any platform and say, I stand with Dan Snyder. You are a part of the problem. Let me tell you what, what category I put those type of parents in. I put them in the same category that I put in the category of the, of the parents that handed their kids to R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Those. I put them in that same category. Because when you get in front of a media and you say, I stand with Dan Snyder, it makes me wonder if you knew. It makes me wonder if you knew about the abuse like many of the women did and the mothers and fathers did that was dealing with R. Kelly, knew about it until it was time to speak out and say something or the money dried up. And because there's no way that you have children that is suffering from trauma of Dan Snyder and you laugh in their face and say that you stand with him is, is crazy to me. You have a whole documentary of student of 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 of, of, uh, of actors, child stars saying this, and you boldly get on social media and say, I, I do not believe this. I stand with Dan Snyder. Trust they knew. The only way that you boldly can do that is if you knew. That's the only way. You there is no other way. There is no other way, guys. You not only knew, but you have to be just like Dan and had no problem with it because I'm sorry, okay? As a mother, I have a 14-year-old. I would never be able to stand on the side of someone that is accused of this when I have multiple people and multiple children speaking out like this. I'm, I'm automatically with the kids. How are you able to do that as a parent? And my thing is this, if you know that your child, you know what you should have been doing as a child, as a, as a parent, asking your child, were you one? Did this happen? That will make, that should make you question your child. Are they holding a secret from you? that They were afraid to tell you after all of these years. That is what you should have been doing. Not going to social media and say, I stand with Dan Snyder. That should have be been the last thing that you're doing. What happened to Lori Beth Denberg of all that? She is uh, speaking out as well. A lot of them are. A lot of the ones, guys, that we've heard little tidbits and, you know, throw this out there. And a lot of them are coming to the forefront. 
And unfortunately, it took for Drake Bell to have his own accusations to get bold enough and strong enough to rally up the troops. Because I think what happened is Drake, when he was accused of the same thing and he said that he did not want to be here anymore because of the attacks that he was getting on social media and how people was treating him after the accusations. I think it was at that moment that Drake talked to somebody who helped him build up the courage to fight back, to say, okay, I have these allegations, but I can tell you where they came from. I can tell you where this came from. And I'm not the only person. And I'm a victim myself of many people that are still hiding in the forefront of Nickelodeon. And if I'm going to go down, I'm not going down by myself. I won't be the only one because there's multiple victims and I'm not the only one, but you have multiple predators that are being protected. And I'm just one that got exposed, but I'm not the only one that has done this. I think that's where this documentary came from. And somewhere around the lines, he was able to rally up the troops and get some of these people to speak out. Some of them have not actually been on the, the show, but some of them have took to their social medias and said, there was one child star. He said, I, my show was canceled because I wouldn't do it. Talking, you know, he wouldn't do the acts. So they canceled the show. Yeah, many of them are just making posts on social media. Basically saying, me too. Either the shows were canceled or they never spoke it out and they got the courage to speak out now. Um, but a lot of them are on the documentary and they're talking about it. It's always the one that speaks that let others come forth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It starts with the parents, Shantae. And that's why I said the audacity when I seen that, that it was a woman, she's a, she was a, one of the child star's mothers. How? I would still, listen, if it was my kid, I'll still be trying to hope and pray that mine wasn't a victim. I would be in too, sh too much shock to have, be able to, to even go to social media and make a, such a bold against the grain statement like that because my mind will still be wondering what if or why or could it be or you know so for her to be able to do that says a lot about her as a mother because how could you how could you slap all these kids in the face like that so basically you're calling these kids liars when the proof has been spread across social media if I seen the videos and the videos are getting millions of, 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 of uh, views on social media, you've seen the videos too. So you're going to disregard what you see in a video and just turn a blind eye? Great. So that lets, lets us know that you turned a blind eye when you've seen things on set and you kept it quiet. If you can blind eye it now, you definitely blind eyed it then. Even though her dad is already a big star. Yes, yeah, she has spoken out. Yeah, a lot of them, a lot of their stories are coming to the forefront. A lot of the child star stories coming to the forefront. It is being said, it's being placed out there, and they have no choice but face the music now. The things that we were saying years a year ago, the things that I brought to the forefront a year ago before the documentary was already there, okay, is coming out now. And it's coming out with clarity and understanding. It's called Quiet on the Set. That's what it's called. So Dan Snyder, I would love to see a prosecution for him. But I guarantee we probably won't get that. But that's something that I would love to see. Because when producers such as, uh, sorry. So because when the producers and such who enable the abuse feel like that you're going to turn against them, 
then that set you, they, they set you up and expose you with all the evidence that they've compiled for the occasion. And that's truth. And that's what's happening right now. We know how it works. They knew. You guys knew when it happened. Now it's just time for the Big Bang. That's all. It's just time now for the Big Bang. Same thing with R. Kelly. Same thing with P. Diddy. Now it's just time for the Big Bang. Nothing more, nothing less. You guys knew this was going on. You guys knew that this was going on. It's just that now you are deciding to put it out there on the forefront. That's it. That's all. And you guys want to make it a big thing now. When us as the people, we knew already. The only people that are in shock at these videos are people who have not been paying attention. But those who have been paying attention closely, they 100% know what's going on. Okay? They know what's going on. Yes, like this video if you like this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in today. I definitely appreciate it. Listen, who's been following Madeline Soto's case? Oh, what a case. Have you guys been following? Because I've been following step by step by step by step. And that's an ugly, ugly, disgusting case. But next week. I'm going to gather everything and bring it forth to you. You have, Miss Dolores, who? Madeline Soto. Okay, so Madeline Soto is a girl who went missing after uh, she was supposed to be getting dropped off at school by her her mother's boyfriend. Okay. Um, she never made it to school. Her mother lied on national television and to authorities about what happened the morning of and her body was later found in an area that was close to where her mother's boyfriend had a flat tire. He has now been arrested for her right now, not for murder. Since it has come out, I have read the full affidavit, which I'm going to give you guys next week, next Friday. Um, it has come out that Madeline Soto has been essayed by this man since 2019 and he had photos videos images in his phone of her um autopsy we're waiting for the autopsy hopefully by the show next week we will have it to let us know exactly how this happened and he will be able to get the murder charge me myself i believe that the mother knew everything and you would never be able to convince me of nothing else because if you're if you're there's something that she said in that interview that really shocked me when he asked her, has she been searching for her daughter? This is her response. She says, no, I'm just here waiting for the phone ring. But in 2024, phones go with you and she wasn't searching for her own daughter. So. Many people are hoping that her daughter end up getting charged, that her, her mother end up getting charged knowing about this. So next week, we're going to get into Madeline Soto's case um, and break that down for you guys because his, tra his trial is set for April. We're going to go and we're going to monitor the trial as well, okay? Um, I have also been covering the case of uh, whew, I got a lot, y'all. I've been covering a lot of cases. Uh, Riley, Riley's body was found today, um, in Tennessee in the river. We're waiting on autopsy reports, um, toxicologies to see if he was actually drugged. I've been following that case as well. You can follow me on all social media platforms to stay updated on what's going on with that case by case. Okay, I mean step by step. That is another case that I've been following very in depth. Okay. Um, I 
I will be going live every single Friday, as you guys know, uh, it can, it can tell. So every Friday is when you guys will see me. So you will end your week with the show from me every single Friday, okay? You can join the discussion on SavageRoyalty.com for all new cases that I'm working and also keep up with the blog. And also I'm now on the app store at S-R-E-N-T. We can keep up on the cases, the blog, the discussions and everything that is happening, okay? Good to know, yeah. Like the mom with the three-year-old that she got off. I can't remember her name. Uh, uh, I'm not sure which case. I covered so many. Thank you for the sharing. No problem. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I didn't know that they have found, oh, his body, uh, Riley's. Yeah, they found his body this morning. They found it this morning. Um, so once the, 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 you know, they let it snow, the toxicology and all those things, um, just look up SR Entertainment, S-R-E-S-R-E-N-T on your Apple App Store. I'm not on Android as of yet. On your Apple App Store, S-R-E-N-T, and that's the app, okay? So stay updated on everything. And if you want to send me stories, you can send me that over there as well. People send me stories over there all day long, breaking news. Send me stuff over there all day. I do have live shows that will be coming only available on SavageRoyce.com and on the app. The next live show that would be on there would be the case of Sheldon Johnson, who was a criminal justice advocate who was arrested for decapitating a man after getting out of jail for a he was in jail for a 50 year sentence. He did 25 of the 50. OK. Alrighty, guys, I'll see you guys uh, next week. OK, you guys have a beautiful, beautiful weekend and I'll see you guys next week.